My name is Raquel Vasquez Mite, and I'm going to talk about a brief report glycosylation, hypogamma globulinemia, and resistance to viral infections. What is glycosylation? Most proteins, including immune globulins, human virus receptors, and viral coproteins, are post translationally modified with sugar or sugar chains that are generically referred to as glycans. Glycans are primarily classified as N link or O link oligosaccharides. Now we're going to see a video about glycosylation. Glycosylation, adding sugars to proteins, begins in the endoplasmic reticulum and continues in the Golgi apparatus. Let's examine the process for one protein. Enzymes in the ER remove glucose and mannose residues from the oligosaccharide chains. Vesicles transport the glycoprotein to the cis-Golgi network, where one of two events occurs. Either N-acetylglucosamines attach to the oligosaccharide and are transported to the lysosomes, or enzymes remove more mannose residues. Vesicles transport the modified glycoprotein to the medial Golgi cisterni where N-acetylglucosamine attaches and more mannose molecules leave the molecule. Vesicles now transport the glycoprotein to the trans-Golgi cisterni. There, galactose and sialic acid join the chain. The glycoprotein is finally ready for transport to the cell's plasma membrane. CDGS. The congenital disorders of glycosylation, CDGS, are genetic disorders affecting the end glycosylation process. CDGS are divided into the effects in the synthesis of end glycans, CDG, CDG1, and effects in the processing of end glycans, CDG2. CDG2B is caused by mutations in the gen encoding MOGS, also known as glucosidase 1. First of all, the term CDG refers to a group of disorders called uh, congenital disorders of glycosylation. Uh, it includes more than 50 uh, defects, genetic. hereditary genetic defects and uh, af mostly affects children of all ages. Uh, the severe forms may manifest in the first days of life and uh, the majority of cases in the, in the first year. Uh, they are uh, systemic diseases. Um, they might involve uh, all the tissues and organs in the body, uh, but mostly uh, affect the uh, brain. So uh, they um, produce the, um, developmental disorders. Uh, children uh, usually are affected by um, developmental delay from mild to severe and uh, learning difficulties and a motor disorder called ataxia. It's important to say that there are no cases studied in Ecuador about CDGS. CDGS in Latin America. <laughs>
uh, we are carrying out a different uh, CDG research line. But our first priority was the CDG, start with the CDG diagnosis in our country. Um, but uh, different PhD fellowships and grants allow us to start um, with this specific project that uh, we are carrying out, the biochemical and molecular basis of congenital disorder of N glycosylation was the first. Um, a new approach in the expression and glycosylation status of um, some specific protein is an exchanger, sodium calcium exchanger in human platelets. Uh, because we uh, think that it has a specific role of these exchangers in the thrombus hemorrhagic events associated with the congenital disorder of glycosylation. The other research line is about uh, this specific CDG subtypes, X1, X2 CDG, um, in patients that present a severe phenotype of multiple osteochondromatosis. And recently, we start with a new project about the oglycosylation disorder uh, that present skeletal dysplasia. Uh, some specific types, like um, familial tumoral calcinosis, spondylocostal dysostosis, Sneckenbecken uh, is a dysplasia, uh, Peter Plath syndrome, and uh, the progeroid type of Ellen Dallas syndrome. Case report. An 11-year-old boy and 6-year-old girl, first and third children, born to a young, healthy, non-consanguineous couple were evaluated. They are characterized by dysmorphic features, hypotonia, scissors, global de develop de developmental delay, cerebral atrophy, optic nerve atrophy, hearing loss, and recurrent bone fractures. Severe hypogamma bulinemia was also diagnosed. The patients had no complications after routine vaccinations, including live viral vaccines. Both patients were evaluated through the National Institutes of Health on the basis of the biochemical and genetic findings. The siblings were given as diagnosis of CDG 2 p But what is hypogammaglobulinemia? Hypogammaglobulinemia is a type of primary immune deficiency disease. Patients hear a specialist referred to as an allergist and immunologist. Most think only about the treatment of allergies and asthma. However, we are also specially trained to identify and treat disorders affecting the immune system. While immune deficiencies are rare, there have been more than 150 distinct immune deficiency syndromes that have been identified. This makes appropriate diagnosis and treatment by an allergist and immunologist very important. Patients with primary immune deficiencies are born missing one or several of the body's immune responses, making them more susceptible to the germs that cause infection. This also leaves patients at increased risk for severe or complicated infection. Patients with primary immune deficiencies often go undiagnosed, as most of these syndromes do not have unique symptoms of their own. Serious primary immune deficiencies are typically apparent in infancy. In milder forms, however, it may take a pattern of recurrent infection before a diagnosis of primary immune deficiency is suspected. Results. The siblings had normal or increased number of B cells in peripheral blood, but severe hypogammaglobulinemia, with significantly shortened half-life for hemoglobin globulin G. The patients had normal specific antibody response to polysaccharide proteins 
conjugated proteins and polysaccharide antigens, but did not respond to to live virus vaccines such as measles, mumps, rubella, or varicella, which are viruses with glycosylation envelopes. These patients did not have altered susceptibility to adenovirus or parvovirus 1, which are non-enveloped viruses, or to Virginia virus, which is an enveloped virus. In contrast, the patients did have markedly reduced susceptibility to infection with HAV and influenza viruses, which are glycosylation-dependent enveloped viruses. So thank you, Vanessa, for the, and thank you all. Um, it's a pleasure to be part of this community, and uh, I, I'm really impressed by the, the, prof the professionals, not only the clinical professionals, but the, the professionalism of the, the families. Because uh, I've learned a lot, not only from, from the clinicians, from all the, our colleagues, researchers, but also from the families, and that's very, very important and very interesting. So I'm a, um, a professor and I'm a, um, a basic scientist and my main aim is to study the glycobiology and the immunology. So I'm leading the group called glycoimmunology. So if you think that the glycosylation is very complex, so immunology is also very complex. So the aim of this talk is to uh, call your attention for the immune response that uh, maybe I'm sure it's not the main problem of our patients, but it's uh, it can be a big problem in our patients. So I will just explain you how it works and how complex it can be. Uh, so I'm not will not enter into many details. So if you have uh, other questions at the end, uh, you can talk with me or you can contact me. So I will explain better. So I hope. I will explain uh, what uh, what is this about Im immune response, how it is affected by uh, glycosylation, or how the glycose the deficiencies on glycosylation can affect our immune response. And I will give you a focus on dendritic cells because it's our focus, it's our main interest in terms of immunology. So we believe that uh, if Conclusion. This data seems to suggest that altered glycosylation may modify the susceptibility to infection with viruses that must undergo protein glycosylation to complete their infection cycle. This study helped us to continue to expand our understanding of genetical determining, determined permutation of host defense that could aid in explaining this initial and unanticipated clinical presentations. Thanks.